So uh, welcome to show 24, right? We got Kim Yang from uh, Georgia that's going to be on the show. She's going to be here to uh, talk about how she's able to offer us, you know, houses that are like pennies on a dollar, like somewhere around $11,000 range, right? So I wanted to get her on there because, man, these are great times. And, you know, and to, to see these deals, she's seen these deals. I mean, and I don't know if you guys, you know, it's it's hard enough finding deals right now, but she's actually got inventory that that she's kind of shown me. So I've seen these deals, and you know, they're about that price, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, let's 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 dig it into it, right? So, hey, Kim, thanks for uh, coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right, so um, let's let's start off by I mean, tell us a little about yourself. You're kind of young. You know, what are you, like 18 or something? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> um, hey, if I was 18, what I'm doing now? Kudos to you. Yeah, kudos to you. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, so like I said before, born and raised Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, yeah. And I graduated my bachelor's in psychology. I was using it for marketing psychology for the purpose of business, really, to understand people, to understand behavior. Um, and to understand how to build relationships because I think it's so important with business. Right? So uh, graduated my bachelor's and then I thought there's no better time than now to uh, move away and figure some things out about myself, figure out my career and what I want to do for the rest of my life. And yeah. so I took a leap. It wasn't, you know, really what my parents wanted me to do at the time. Uh, because Georgia is so far away compared to Wisconsin, right? And so mm -hmm. um, I, I did it, though. And I drove out of Milwaukee, moved down to Georgia, have some family and friends down there as well, um, and uh, started to to um, do digital marketing. Uh, I had dabbled in drop shipping and e-commerce while I was in Wisconsin. And then when I moved down south, I knew I didn't want to work for someone anymore, you know, trading my time for dollars. And um, that's how I took the entrepreneurial route and I started my agency called Skymark Agency. Um, and I focus on digital marketing, social media marketing, um, and, uh, a B2B lead generation specialist on the platform of LinkedIn. Wow. So you start your own business. Yeah. You're saying? Yeah. I started my right own after, right after school, right after school. Yeah. And that's not what I learned at school. Yeah. You started with a psych deg degree. What, what, what changed your mind? Like, changed my mind well i it was difficult for me in college to really figure out what i wanted to major in i feel like we're so pressured and we're so limited on the things that we need to choose uh yeah. to major in um and i just feel like we didn't i don't know i never really had someone to teach me that there are other opportunities out there in the world um and so i, I had to do some digging to figure out what i wanted to major in and i realized that i like understanding people i like learning about why we think the way we think why we do the things we do and i wanted to apply that to business with marketing specifically. Um, and that's what really piqued my interest in that. And then I never thought I'd start my own business, really. It was yeah. part of my plan, but I I did in Georgia. You know, I had no professional network. I had to build that professional network and build relationships and build connections down there, which mm -hmm. thankfully I have successfully am still building, still growing, still learning every day. So, yeah. Um, that, that's kind of how things started off. And then when I moved to Atlanta, I got really intrigued with the real estate down there because I I, I came across a ton of uh, real estate agents. I did digital marketing for some of them. I did lead generation for them as well. And then I saw the opportunities there and I started yeah. networking and learning more about real estate for myself. And I realized I wanted to be part of my end game, my long-term goals. And so wow. um, I just started uh, connecting with people and, uh, you know, doing business with people within real estate. So that's kind of how the transition works there. I still do digital marketing lead generation, but now I want real estate to be one of my primary focuses as well. Wow. So you're going to yeah. like, hopefully someday <laughs> phase away from your digital marketing. Yeah. You know, or, or still have it, but yeah. not really work on, uh, work in my business, but more so work on it and, and oversee it. Cool, cool. Start a team and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens in the next uh, year or two or three. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So we got a lot of people on here. I mean, that's really? you. You are you are popular. Oh man, you know? 
No, it's just it's <laughs> with platforms. I'm telling you, man, it's all your people. <laughs> so guys, give us some likes, you know, for getting her oh, you know, to oh. some oh. thumbs up or some <laughs> likes, or whatever they call it, you know. So it's called likes, isn't it? It is called oh, likes. likes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> give us some give us some likes, some thumbs up or whatever, guys, for getting her here, you know, her her finishing school and then starting her own business. That's amazing. And then and then moving on to real estate. That's I mean, I didn't start real estate until I was like, oh man, past my 30s. So you're starting really? now, you know, you're only gonna like progress, you know. Let's hope. I'm hoping. And better. I think there's still so much more that I need to learn, but who better than to to speak and surround yourself with than the professionals that are you know already do successful in the industry, right? Yeah. So so give us a bit, you know, like uh so give us a bit like okay, so let's start. Like tell us, I mean, how does this work? How how are we able to I mean, how are you getting these properties for like around the average eleven thousand range? Okay. Let's start on that, yeah. All right. Well before I, I get started on that, I just want to clarify that, you know, the title of this was what purchasing houses around eleven K. Um, these are investing opportunities. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that you can you can get a whole house, your first house at 11 K, it's going to be your dream house. Okay. Um, this is an investing opportunity uh, for, for investors, for anyone really who has just that extra cash, right? Who wants to get started in real estate. I think it's a great opportunity to start because uh, my partner and I, we have direct connection to the BP of auction.com. Now, if you're in the real estate industry, I'm sure you've heard of auction.com. Um, and since we have that relationship with him, we're able to get pre-negotiated off-market houses between ranging between six to 11 K. Okay. Now these aren't, like I said, your dream houses, these aren't the best properties, but as investors, you understand that, right? Because as an investor, you see in a, a house and you see the opportunity that could, that you could, um, you know, do owner financing or rent it out or fix and flip and sell it again. You see that as an investor. Mm -hmm. um, so these houses are really cheap. Six to 11 K is cheap. Like, right. Do you agree, Chai? Yeah, that's Investor yourself. Yeah, that's amazing. Like, I mean, I don't know what's with the size of these houses, but even like, if that's the case, I mean, damn, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's low, but and yeah. Yeah. And you've been investing a lot longer than I have, but yeah. and to hear that from you too, um, that's awesome. And so we have access to the pre, these pre-negotiated houses, but we are looking only for serious cash yeah. investors. Okay. Um, because like I said, they're cheap houses and our investors typically purchase between four to five at a time because they see the opportunities or they see the things that they can do. Right. Okay. okay. So, so Amp didn't ask of these, are these, I can't, can't click on the button anymore, but are these, uh, finance or cash properties? And you didn't, you did mention that it has to be purchased through cash only. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Cash okay. properties. Yes. Um, okay. so what it is, is we get, a a few houses, I'd say between six to 10 houses at a time and we'll compile a list. Uh, you, you know, we have the details of the houses, but we will give you access to the list for you to do your own due diligence of the house. Okay. And to see if it's, uh, something that you want to invest in something that sh the numbers work well for you and your business or what you're trying to do. Okay. And so and it's exclusive list that we have. Um, and they go by really fast because like we said, and we keep, we're going to keep saying they're cheap, they're a good range. Um, and you can do what you want with the house, whether you want to own or finance, whether you want to fix and flip and sell it off. But we but you just can't wholesale them. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really the gist of it. Um, I don't know if you had any specifics or if anybody actually had other questions as well. Yeah. So like explain what that mean. Like can't wholesale. Well, that's what my partner told me. So yeah. I'm leaving him on that because he has the direct communication with, um, the view, yeah. Right. Um, and so since they're getting it directly from auction.com, I guess maybe one of the agreements that they had was just that we can't wholesale these properties off. Um, okay. I don't know the specifics for that. I can get the answer to that question. But as far as what I'm told and the process of how we do things, we just can't wholesale. Okay. So, all right. So, but, um, all right. So, so, so you get these properties and your, your partner, 
uh, and you, whatever, you guys get these properties and then, uh, are there, is there anything wrong with these properties or, or like, I mean, is it because, I mean, was it because he's your, he's buddies with, he's but good buddies with, you know, the, the VP of auction.com and he goes, Hey, here, here's a few, you know, but what, what's, what's, what's the deal with these houses? No, I mean, um, if you've seen auction.com, there are, there are a lot of properties that you see images that they, they, they need some work, right? Typically, these properties do need some work um, because they're getting auctioned off at a certain price. But, um, you know, I don't know the specific logistics as to why we're able to get them at 6 to 11K. But I do know that that's the arrangement that my partner had worked out specifically with him. Okay? Yeah. Um, and I've seen a few of these properties. I can't really disclose some of their locations right now, you know, because we have a process of how we do things. But uh, I've seen a few and they they could use some work. All right. Um, and I mean, it really varies on the, the the locations that they're at and if how much work you want to do to them. It's It all depends on you and how much you want to invest in it. But I do have to say that they could use some work to sum it all up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And and two goes two's got a pretty good question. Like, do you know what an ARV is? Yes. So, so he so he's basically saying like, what's the average ARV of these properties? Do you, do you it's just an average? Do you, do you have an idea what they are? The average. Oh, I have this down in my notes. Um, I don't have the exact number or the exact answer to that. Yeah. Um, so it's like so when so like if it's like eleven thousand, we're thinking like maybe it's like a hundred thousand houses, like hundred thousand dollar houses, or are we talking like two hundred thousand? Like what are the some of the ones that you that you kind of seen? From the ones I've seen, I'm thinking I'm not I'm not I'm not going to say that they're up to a, a you know hundred or two hundred k. Um, okay. I think they're they're below that. Um, like I said, each each one of the houses you're gonna obviously have a different one, right? A different A R or A R V. And so um yeah. I, I think it's below hundred K. Um good which, which is totally fine, right? Because oh, yeah, yeah. Like, sure. because like let's just say you rent something, you know, uh let's say you like you're going rent is like, you know, a thousand let's just make it easy, like a thousand, right? Yeah. So it only takes you like ten months to make that thousand. Exactly. Right? And then exactly. you get all your money back. So it doesn't have to be like, you know, if you buy that house, like let's say like that house that we're buying that you offer me one, which is like 11,000, you know, and I'm renting and that area is, is has a rent market of like a thousand just to make it simple for the show. You know, yeah, only yeah. it takes me like 11 months to get all that money back. Right. And then that house continues to make money for me like continuously, you know, right. So that's what that's I mean, that's what I want you guys to see on the show that, you know, uh, that's the power of like cash flow. You know, I mean, we're, we're, we're just talking simple numbers here. But um, yeah, so like uh, so two is it talking about the ARV. So if you're you're saying that it could be right around under 100,000, right? Yeah. Yeah. OK, yeah. cool. Cool. For sure. Also, I just want to point this out, too, that typically when okay six to eleven k is is really good yeah. for the, the condition of the house that you'd be getting or purchasing right yeah. but investors spend so much more than just six to eleven k to purchase a regular property not on not like an opportunity like this okay and then they spend maybe let's say 20 grand on a house they can spend another 20 grand to fix it up and then mark up the price after right while while they're trying to sell it but if you're buying a house for six to eleven k and then you put in another like say 10 grand of um uh or to fix it up that's yeah. still pretty good um and then marking it up on top of that like and like you yeah. were saying after you know that rent you'll make that back within a year or two and then you'll just have that residual residual income coming in monthly and if you have four to five of these houses it's yeah it's a good deal yeah absolutely so is there like so is there like any like holding period? Like, let's say I buy it from you. Like, is there a holding period? Like how long can I hold that property until I sell it again? Is there, is there a, is there something like that? Hmm. A holding period. Again, I don't know the specifics on that because when it gets to a certain point, 
Oh, let me yeah. clarify this. I do a lot of the marketing out for these properties and, and speaking in the communication with the investors. Now there, there's a point where I turn over to my partner to answer specifics. Okay. And then that's with those specifics, like the holding and, you know, the, the situation with the earnest money and uh, closing fees and costs, things of that sort. That's when my partner steps in as well. Probably okay. should have uh, had him give me a little more information on that. Oh, no worries. No worries, because you're you're the marketer, right? You're like, all right, this is what you got, you know. You're you're kind of like the salesperson. He's kind of yeah. like the back end guy. Eye. I get it, yeah. but you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you know, I want the deal no matter what. So you know, whether you offer it to me or it's, I get it somehow, you know, it's still. I mean, it doesn't matter. We'll get that information somehow. And at the end yeah. of the day, when you buy it, I'm sure there's going to be some sort of documentation that says, okay. These are like some requirements you have to meet. Is, does it does it does it tell you like if there's any sort of damages when when you when you have this list? Does it um, give you that? Too? Well, um, you've seen the list, right? Well, actually, just you. Um, but from the list that we have, it does it does tell you like an estimated uh, price range for um, you know how much it would cost to maybe fix it up. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see. Uh, like the damages and, and it doesn't list out specifically what's wrong. Now, if you want to get in contact with that and get that information, then obviously the process of you purchasing the house, you'll get all that information. Um, it's completely open to you specifically, the, the investor to, to know all those, to know all those things. Gotcha. You gotta gotcha. know what you're investing in, right? So it makes sense for us and it'll make sense for you too. Yeah. So yes, you know, you guys have any questions? Hit them up. I got. I do see a few questions here, and I, and we'll, I will ask them along the way. So you know, um, that's great. I, I'm 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 happy you guys have some questions here. I'm asking my questions first. So, <laughs> but but yeah. So you know, give us some likes. You know, Kim's giving us some real, you know, uh, edge here, right? Because she's she's got a list of like properties that are really cheap, and you know, you got to do your homework on it, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I think one of them was asking, like, do you have any in Minnesota? I saw that come up somewhere. Um, so two fan goes, hey, so do you have any of these lists for Minnesota? And did you, I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> oh, no, I was, I was, I thought you were going to say something else. Um, yeah. The only thing I can really disclose is that a majority of these houses are going to be found along the East Coast. Um, it's not limited to not limited to the East Coast, but from the current lists we have and the the list that we've been getting, they've been primarily on the East Coast. So I'm, okay, yeah, I won't share too much of the details. I can't really. So yeah, um, I can and explain explain why. Like I had to go through like your disclosures. Can can you explain that part so they at least they get an idea like why why we're saying why we we can't say this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the arrangement we have with uh, the VP and getting these houses, it's you, we want you guys to go through us because we can walk you through the process of getting these houses um, because you can only get them through us. And so because of that reason, it's exclusive. It's a small list, right? And if we just mass market these, we don't want to just mass market these. Lists. We want to work with serious investors um, who understand the opportunity uh, that we have in front of them, really. And and so we don't like to just put the list out completely, say, posting them on Facebook pages um, and, you know, any other groups that uh, it, within real estate. Uh, so we don't want to do that. We want to be able to work closely with these investors um, and to have you on a list so that you can continuously get the exclusive houses that were that we have. So it's we want to make it an exclusive thing um, and work with serious investors. And this is kind of how we can filter that out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, serious investors understand that sometimes there might be a commission agreement, right? Or an NDA that we have to sign non-disclosure agreement so that you can't say certain things. We don't double cross. It's just things like that, that we, we want to avoid. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's kind of like you want, you want to, you it's kind of like your way you're funneling your your buyers right yeah. to get repeat buyers Absolutely. so you get you get you get your buyers list that you're kind of saying okay well this guy's done he's already purchased stuff from me already so then you 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 trust them more so you just yeah. keep feeding them so it's kind of like so 
I see it. I mean, I see it just, just, it's just, an, it's just kind of like you're building your customers list. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Then that's why she has that. And you know, because sometimes a lot of people just, just want to see, you know, they just, they just, they're just interested, but they're not serious, which I understand as well. Um, but fortunately for the process that we're working with, with these houses, that's, that's just how we're going to have to do it too. Yeah. 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 Uh, there was a question here it says is auction.com a nationwide. Na is it? it is, it is nationwide, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I think so too. Chang. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, there was a question here saying that, do we get, to, so would I own, so me says, so would I own the property as is and all for as little as 11 K? So you elaborate more about more on that? Yes. Uh, so you would own all the property. Um, and yeah, as little as 11K. And then when you have a tenant or a potential person that's trying to own the property and they're renting it from you, then you obviously would still have to pay like uh, taxes for the house because you own it until they pay it off. So yeah, absolutely. Um, you would own the property for as little as, actually it's between six to 11K, a, a little over 11K maybe too. But yeah, it would it would be yours. Yeah, we're just saying, like, guys, are saying eleven k because when when I asked her, like, how much, how much are they, and you know, they they they, they range in prices. So I just kind of say average eleven k, just so you guys see numbers and say, okay, yeah, okay, that's you know, I can deal with that, you know, so I can get into the real estate game for around eleven k. That's kind of reason why I put it on there. So it was that title was kind of for me, yeah. so I can, so you guys can allow, you know, kind of see that. Okay, you know, what if I did have eleven k? I might be able to get a house, you know. Exactly. So that's that's the reason. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so when we talk about like only, I mean, you get to when you buy this house, you you get deed to the house, right? Title, yeah. Right. Title and deeds, and then you're you're paying taxes. You just mentioned you're paying taxes mm -hmm. because you property pay. tax because it's yours. Mm -hmm. So that's why you know that was the question just to confirm for her, right? Um, but obviously when your tenant pays off the house, you, everything gets switched over to them and it becomes theirs. That's what the owner financing process is. Oh, okay. So, so that's a little bit different, right? So what, what is that? Can you explain that? Uh, well, owner financing, I like to think of it as you purchasing this house and then you becoming the bank, right? So instead of um, the tenant paying the bank that, you know, you would typically take a loan for a mortgage. Um, you just figure out an agreement or a, appropriate renting that you would like to do monthly and they rent it all they rent it out um monthly and then they do that all the way until it's paid off and then once it's paid off uh, they own the house then so the owner financing oh so it's it's not really your are you is it a contract is it is it that way where you can offer it or what if you want to keep it well, if you, oh yeah, if you want to keep it, you can rent it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm you just can keep that. it, and you don't have to like own or finance it. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to. Um, we just, just our team internally, we like to push for owner financing because then you can have, you know, you just owner finance, repeat, owner finance, repeat. That's what a lot of our investors have been doing, and so that's why we push for it, and that that formula has worked very well. But like I said, you you can fix it up, rent it, keep it, whatever you, you want to do with it, except. The wholesaling like we talked about oh gotcha so yeah. so those of you guys don't know what she's talking about is, is like a different strategy here so Sorry, the, the first the first thing is you can buy the property own it and control it and do whatever you want to do with it just rent it out for the rest of your life whatever but what they like to do well what kim is explaining here is there's a different way of doing it because you as a landlord you have to take care of everything here but what if you don't want to take care of it? What if like, what if you live in Minnesota, right? And you want to buy this house, which is in like North Carolina or something like that. And you don't want to drive or fix the house. I mean, let's say you fix it once, but you don't want to go and, you know, hire a property manager. So what she's saying is, um, we call it owner financing, or you're kind of like, you're, you're kind of like selling the house to the, the tenant yeah. and saying, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm totally hands off at this point. 
this is still my house. Uh, we we signed this contract. You take care of it. You you pay me this amount, and then you still pay me rent every month until a certain time, like five years or so, and then you can buy this house. So that's that's like another uh, way. That's like another real estate strategy that like uh, us real estate investors use, so we don't have to go and check on the house and because because we get the tenant to take care of it oh. uh, from here on. So yeah. she's throwing in a con a, a, a real estate strategy, kind of like an advanced strategy in there. And I mean, is that what your partner does all the time? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, they push for that. They're investors as well. And that's what they do. And so, and I also think it's a lot of people can't get a loan or get a house from, you know, get money from the bank. You know what I mean? And so it, it gets difficult for them to be able to purchase a house. And so I think this is just another opportunity um, that people might look into, especially now during the pandemic, you know, they might start considering alternative living conditions. So that's why I think owner financing could be really gold right now. Okay. And well, well, I mean, uh, I want to expand. There was a few questions. Let me, let me, okay, ladies, let me jump on that quickly. So, so the reason why you, you're saying that it's, you can't get money for it because they're most bank won't lend, lend. Uh, like anything like under 50,000. Right. So that's kind of why that's kind of that, uh, that's that's kind of like an obstacle. So, so what do you do, right? Yeah. So if you have cash, you can buy. It. Yeah, great. But you know, for me, I've done this before. I just take in my credit card and write a check. You know, because I got a balance and you know of like ten thousand and you know a credit of ten thousand. Just write a check and say, hey, I want ten thousand dollars. And bam, you know, here's my cash, and I just buy it. So that's kind of like another strategy of, of like purchasing this kind of stuff. So, um, can you think of anything else? Oh, it's off of my head. Um, I mean, I, yeah, no, I was going to say, I just, I don't know. I, I'm not too, uh, savvy with the financial part in getting money, but yeah, no for housing, because I don't even have my own, my own house, right. That like, um, I live under, but that's just for personal, personal. Reasons. Yeah, no worries. I mean, yeah. 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 Um, but it's, but, it's, it's oh, the deal that we're talking about. So yeah, like yeah. you're offering us the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Who cares if you don't have it, you know, like don't know it. We just like, we, you know, us guys, most of the time, like the investors be like asking these kind of questions or like I said, at the end, when they actually, getting ready to purchase it that out that outline is actually defined in there so yeah yeah you're just looking for like that amount right so yeah. if, if that house is like seven thousand you're just like give me five, give me the seven thousand <laughs> that's in your case here in so my, right right <laughs> uh let's see here two goes how do you guys deal with the banks that owns the properties does the vp of auction communicate with banks for you guys yeah i think yeah, I, I think, yeah, so too, I think what she's saying is like, is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're saying is like, you don't deal with the banks, right? To nope. to get a loan on that. Nope. You, this is a cash offer. Yeah. Right? Right. Okay. Yeah, actually, you can, typically, I, I know that there are, um, you can go to auctions that actually have these houses. Like for, for Georgia, I know that, you know, what is it like every first Tuesday or second Tuesday of the month? you can go and buy mm -hmm. these houses um, for cheap because they're auctioned off. Because, you know, when someone can't afford the house anymore, it goes back to the bank and the bank owns it. And then, you know, the bank, if, if it, nobody buys it at the auction, then it goes by to the, back to the bank and a whole process. But yeah, the, these are, um, you don't have to go through the banks for these properties. Okay. Um, so the other two, I got these two, these two twos are asking questions. <laughs> Let's get some other guys to ask questions too, right? So, so he goes, how do you market these deals, right? Any tips for finding and marketing real estate deals? So, I, I mean, your marketing deals, how do you expose these type of deals? I mean, I know you, I know I found you through our real estate group, which is the Mom Real Estate Investors Group. Right. Which, yeah. uh, but, uh, uh, which is on Facebook. I'm just going to do a self promo. Uh, I have a group. <laughs> called Mon Real Estate Investors Group. So if you guys want to know about real estate, um, um, and mostly, you know, it's mostly for Mon people, um, just search under Facebook for Mon Real Estate Investors and 
and we'll add you in there. But uh, and that's how I found you on there, and that's how we we start discussing about this. Anyway, how do you market these type of deals? Mm, I'm gonna just talk about how I've marketed deals outside of this because um because I kind of well okay let me just put this out there I join a lot of different Facebook groups uh, specifically within real estate and I I share obviously to get accepted into these groups within real estate you have to answer a few questions to join the group and then once you get approved you have to look at the page rules and then you can do your posting um, I'm sure a lot of people on here join you know uh, Facebook groups and join real estate groups so you know how that goes, but it's, you just post on there. Really, you post your opportunities, you post your deals, um, depends on the group. Um, I also do that on LinkedIn. I join groups there um, and I connect with professionals there. I think LinkedIn is a really good platform to promote your deals, to get deals, to connect with other professionals in industry as well. Um, and so I think, I think it's very, to do it, it's very easy, right, to say to do this stuff. But I think the hard part is the consistency and following up. Because I can make one post on a page about a deal and so many people can comment. But I, if I don't keep up with all those people or if I don't personally message them or uh, email them back, then I'm going to lose those potential deals or potential clients that I could have. So it has a lot to do with consistency. But as far as I've seen, Facebook works really well with real estate. Um other industries are might hit a little better on LinkedIn, but Facebook for sure, and just joining different groups and connecting and contacting and talking like that's really what has worked best for me. Yeah. So you bought, you know, you bought something that's new to me, right? Exactly. Using LinkedIn to get deals. Yeah. I mean, how does that work? How do you, how are you doing that? Are you just like adding friends and then what? Not friends? I don't know what they call it. Like business. Uh, their connections. Connections. There you go. So how, do, how are you doing that? Well, I connect, yes, with a lot of different realtors. I connect with investors, commercial, uh, residential. Um, and I've seen it from them as well. They post their deals on there um, because a lot of investors will want to purchase them or, you know, friends of friends of friends. You never know who you're speaking to. Um, and that's that's what you have to do. It, you have to just put it out there. Um, LinkedIn, I see people post regularly and get people interested you have to talk to people though that's the thing um it's not like you post one time and someone's immediately gonna get it yeah um, i think it's relational i think real estate is very relational so you have to nurture those conversations and that's it i mean i i think it's so important those relationships really just be i can only speak on my personal experience right yeah so from your experience what's more efficient facebook or linkedin for real estate yeah uh, facebook facebook okay but it's still it's still nice to go to a different niche like linkedin oh yeah uh, just, to, just to hit something else just in case you know you might find a potential buyer from linkedin i know yeah. you find investors on linkedin too a lot of them yeah absolutely because you know like i do get a bunch of like money people messaging me like hard money lenders yeah like, and it messaged because I put myself as a real estate investor on my LinkedIn profile. Yeah. So I do get a lot of requests. So what is your title? I mean, what do you put down for like? Oh man, my title. Um, I I have to go look. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I have. Well, I do a lot of connecting, right? I do a lot of international and domestic connecting. Um, yeah. And that I, I say connecting because I help business owners, professionals get them in front of their ideal clients. And so in that in that sense, I call myself a connector, right? Um, and then I also have digital marketing and B2B lead generation, and then also real estate investor as well. So that title on, or that headline on LinkedIn is so important because that's how people find you. That's why all those people are finding you because you have that listed in your headline. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, just a quick shout out, uh, Chang goes, hey, Kim, thank you for thinking about us home investors, you know? Yeah. Cause we, you know, it's, it's hard, right? It's I mean, competitive houses are competitive right now. And, you know, thanks for like, just, just giving us a chance, you know, even if you don't, if you even, I mean, this is cash. So like, you know, if you have 10,000 in the bank, just drop it on a property. I mean, that's, that's a different, that's a game changer, right? Because like, how am I supposed to get a loan if my credit sucks? 
exactly. or I can't, I don't know if I can say that on my show, but <laughs> I just said it. But if your credit are, is not good, you can't get a loan to buy a property at all. So, you know, you just, you just give me us a little edge right here. So, uh, change is giving you a shout out right here. I appreciate uh, that. yeah. Pangos, serious buyers and sellers period. But basically, yeah, you're right. Kim, Kim's looking for serious buyers, right? Um, two goes back and says, okay, what's the minimum amount of property we have to purchase at one time? Uh, there is no minimum. Um, you can purchase as many as you want. You can purchase the whole list if you want. Uh, but if you want to purchase one, that's completely fine as well. Uh, typically what we've seen with our investors is that it ranges between four to five at a time because they're so cheap. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. There, there isn't, um, there isn't a minimum amount that you have to purchase. Gotcha. Uh, Pangos, this is confusing. <laughs> we got you, bro. We got your back, bro. We got your back. Just message her. We'll, we'll give you her contact later and she yeah. can kind of walk through it. If, if you really want to get into this, uh, I know you're doing something amazing, bro. Uh, I think Pang, you do, um, he, he does assisted living. But uh, if he's looking to get into this, I mean, this, well, this can be another game changing for him too. But yeah, we'll we'll give you a contact later, and you you can connect with Kim and kind of go from there. Um, so so Ty goes are the properties in the ghettos? Um, I can't answer that because I don't have. I can't disclose it. <laughs> now, if you sign our NDA um, in the agreement and you get in front of these houses, I, I'll send you the list of these houses and you do your own due diligence. Now, there are a few things that we do list on there. I mean, we'll tell you, you know, the number of rooms, number of bathrooms, uh, you know, how big the property is. Uh, but, you know, you do your own due diligence of it. So, yeah. So you um, you provide an address too, right? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so they can, you know, they can do their own homework. You see if that's in a you know area. Bad, right. good area, right? So, so yeah, I mean, it's not like you're in the dark. So you, we have an address, or well, you supply an address to it. So, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, I'm not sure what he's saying. Uh, yeah, Bo, Bo goes get or not, still money. <laughs> that's still. That's still eleven thousand or or less. I mean, yeah. like I said, I bought. I mean, there's properties in Milwaukee, right? That are like two or three thousand dollars. I mean, people are still buying it. Of course, they're going to be in the ghetto, right? But if you think about it, I mean, it's. I mean, yeah, it's going to get. It's going to need to be fixed, and there's stuff that's going to need to be fixed. But if if rent is like six hundred dollars, do you know? And you fix whatever needs to be done. Or, you know, what if it didn't need to be fixed? It's still six hundred dollars rent for that particular month. You're gonna get you're gonna have to pay that that's gonna get paid off pretty quick, you know? So Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's 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 the cash flow game. Uh see ghetto or not flip. Hey, see for this deal. Okay, so Chang goes for this deal, for this deal, do you guys go through a title company for the transaction? Um, I don't know the specifics on that because like I mentioned previously, my partner handles that after a certain point that, you know, I get involved, he steps in, um, and he furthers introductions with the investor interested party and walks through that process. I would, I would think so. I would think so. Um, yeah, yeah I would think so. Because if it, if you're getting deed to the property, you know, there's gotta be some sort of uh, something done right. Yeah. So, um, so, like I said, you can reach out to her. She's just marketing these properties, giving us a chance to uh, to buy these. Right. Uh, see, some states might go. Some states do go do it through attorney, and some are through title. Okay, so that's the answer right there. So, we, I mean, there we don't right. know, but it's you know still the same thing. You have to go through an attorney, or you know, that's be legit, pretty yeah. much. Right. It would be. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah, guys, let us know if you got any questions. I mean, do you have a story to tell us? Like is this, does your, I mean, your partner, I mean, how many deals has he done? Do you know? Uh, I know that he purchased a few of his own. Um, as far as the investors, I can't put a number down onto it. 
Um, but I do know that he's worked with some higher level investors that are repeatedly coming back to the properties as well because they understand that they have a they have a system in place that works for them. And so they, you know, just keep buying them and, and it, it works. But as far as a number of specific investors that have purchased deals, I can't really say, I can't put my num finger on it. Yeah. Um, but he's purchased right now, maybe about six houses he has on his own as well. Um, and then a few other investors I know personally have about between four or five. And these are outside of state but they have a good system and it works for yeah. them. I know that they have a guy that um, that rides on his motorcycle and goes out to the properties and like puts signs out in front of the houses, takes pictures of the properties for them and stuff too. So they have a oh. whole system that works well for them. Yeah. Okay. So he's got a system going on. I see what, I see what's going on. So, so he's got the properties he can offer to you and then he's off. Is he all, is he offering to manage them as well? He is. Okay, explain that. Do you, do you know the process? Um, this I know generally that he has a property management company too. That if you purchase a property out out of state, obviously you've never you never seen the property or you never have to physically go there because he has the option of um, helping you uh, manage it, right? So he's got that company, and then like I said, he's got a guy that will go take pictures for you, put a sign out in front of the house and take care of the property because you can't physically be there. So I think that's pretty good too. Not yeah, I mean. Right, like one thing, yeah. Yeah, if if you're far, you know, yeah, that's awesome, yeah. you know. So to have somebody that you buy from, so you create that trust and some, you know, you create that, you know, relationship already. And then they also manage it for you in a way. And I guess he's also teaching, is he teaching that the owner finance portion to you or is it like is, are you on your own with that um he could teach it to you i mean yeah we we could definitely uh you know teach you guys how to do the owner financing i, I wouldn't see that being a problem at all uh um, yeah they do it themselves right so uh it's not that hard but is he like hey you know this is what you could do like kind of like a mentor like all right you got the house for me you know I, would, I got. Money. I would suggest this or this, and yeah, what they would do. Yeah, it's like if you're a newbie, you know. Yeah, okay. So you got the house from Kim. Kim's got her commission, whatever, because you, you work off commission on this, on these kind of stuff too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then you know, okay, all right. So now we have a relationship building, you know, because he. And I'm sure he wants to keep you as you know a relationship because he's probably got more inventory down the road that he wants to sell. So then he goes, all right. So I mean, these are the game plan that I've seen that happen and. You know, maybe, I mean, that owner financing is not, it's not that hard of a process. So I'm sure, I mean, I don't know, maybe if you're interested, get a hold of Kim and Kim can get a hold of her partner that. Oh yeah. Or, oh yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we'd be more than happy to hop on a phone call with you guys to further introductions. We really like to further introductions because we like to know about you as the investor and we want you to feel comfortable and know, um, you know, what we know and what we're doing here. So we're completely open to that. This, you know, we don't want it to seem, I know six to 11 K might stand out to people as like scammy, but yeah. when you hop on a call with us, we're real people. I'm here. We're doing this live. I'm talking about it. My partner's yeah. live. I got the video. I can show you. Uh, but we actually want to hop on a phone, on a phone call with you or zoom call and talk. We want to do that because we want to build a relationship with our investors and we want you to have a relationship with us. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Sarah goes, you guys have a question, uh, comment them. Uh, Sarah goes, is this a one-time list that we get, or is it like, does it keep growing or do you get to be on some sort of like a list that new stuff comes in? They keep you guys send out email blasts. How, do, how does it work? It rotates. Okay. So like I said, we get a list of maybe between six to 10 houses at a time. Right. And then um, those houses get sold off very fast. So, yes, we do get a new list. And as an investor, if you don't purchase from that list or it gets bought off, you would after signing the agreements, we, I would shoot over a new list every time we get one to you because you're an investor with us. Does that make sense? Oh, so you. OK, so let's see the list I got last week. It is everybody bought them all. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're saying. The new one comes back. Do I have to re-sign all your disclosures or anything like that, yeah. or you just say, "Hey, these are new ones. Do you, are you interested?" Yeah, yep, that's how it would be. Awesome. And so the process cool. of let me clarify that with you. Then the houses, the house list that you saw, 
some of them are still kind of being processed because it takes some time to negotiate and to, to figure out, um, you know, the deals. And so it, some investors take longer, some investors don't. I guess just the list that you saw, the investors that we, we've we shown it to are kind of just taking a little longer on it. So we still have a few of those houses as well. But to answer Sarah's question, yes, it, it is different. And you will begin sent new houses. But gotcha. like weekly, right? This isn't like every week you're going to get a new house list. It's specific houses and a specific list that we have to put together to compile up in order to send it out to our investors. Okay, cool. That's awesome. All right. I think I'm out of questions. Anybody any final questions to ask Kim? Kim's giving us a competitive edge here, guys. So, you know, now it's your chance to own inventory or own a property if you want. I mean, it might be out of state, it might not be, uh, but the, the key is to get on that list, you know, just to see, you know, if there's anything that's in your area that you like or, you know, who knows where you guys are from. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, once again, it's not, I know it sounds scary to be on that list, to sign that disclosure. Can you just tell them like what you ask out of there? That's all it is. Um, we do it. Yeah. We have a fish, a commission agreement of $1,500, right? But that's if you purchase a house that you like, then that's when that commission comes into play. If you see the list and you, you don't see a house that you want to purchase, then you don't pay anything. Yeah. That's, yeah. She's right. That's, that's all I saw in that disclosure. It's just her amount. She's saying that it's this much. If you buy the house, you, buy you know, house. you pay her this amount and then, uh, you can't tell anybody about this particular house, whatever that's on these lists. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You know, you move on from there. Um, me goes, uh, let's see how we do. You. Can, you, can you disclose if there's a fee to get this list? No, we just have to do the uh, NDA agreement. Yeah, so. list. like I, I would really appreciate it if the investors wouldn't blast it out to their friends because that's why we signed the NDA to avoid. Yeah, that. yeah. So no fee. You just sign a, a little document online, right? Yep. And just say, hey, I won't tell anybody about what I, what I'm seeing, you know, because she wants to keep all that for her commission. Mm -hmm. That's how she makes money because she's trying to sell these kind of stuff. That's all it is so disclosure yeah yeah so that's just to keep yeah so let's legal. yeah what's that i said that's just to keep things legal too you know legally not disclosing certain information that's just yeah you know, a lot of businesses do that as well okay yep yep so yeah so let's move on so how do they get a hold of you uh well since i do a lot of digital marketing and i live a laptop lifestyle I would prefer to be con contacted over Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn, I would prefer more, but I understand not a lot of people are on LinkedIn, which you probably should be, um, but connect with me on LinkedIn at Kim Yang, and you can also find me at Kim Yang also on Facebook. So Explain that. Why, also. why do you push LinkedIn? Is there an advantage to it or? I think so. No, nah, I always thought LinkedIn was just an on uh, like an online resume, like a, like a profile that I just put online so that recruiters or, or companies can come and find me, right, to do work. But as an entrepreneur, it's so good at building your professional network. Um, and I think it'd be so great for college students right now, even high school students, to really get on LinkedIn and 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 uh, connect with professionals in your industry. And on LinkedIn, there's articles where you can learn about your industries. There's articles about what's happening on the world right now, um, but it's at a professional level, I'd like to think. Um, and so I think young people, millennials should definitely be on there and start communicating with, you know, connect with the CEO of the company you wanna work with or connect with people that are working at that company. Because I think when you can build those relationships um, and people know who you are and you know who they are. I think it really helps, you know, when you're trying to step into, into business and in your career, I really think it helps. It's like, what's when, I, when like, what's the difference? You know, it's like, it's like, if I want to connect with Elon Musk, he's on Facebook, right? But mm -hmm. if I want to connect to Elon Musk on LinkedIn, what's the advantage of LinkedIn versus, uh, are you saying just the articles 
that you see yeah. that populates art from business or what is it? It's, it's like, I think Facebook is a lot more personal. I'm not saying you can't get personal on LinkedIn, but I, yeah. it's very personal there. It's for a place where, for friends and family, I think a lot. Um, but on LinkedIn, it's like, you don't want to have some of your LinkedIn connections as Facebook friends sometimes. Right. Because like I say, people like to post things about their lives on Facebook, whereas on LinkedIn, it's a lot strictly more business. OK. Yeah. So there's a difference there. Now, if you if you've um, been on both platforms, there's a difference. Like, there's certain things that I would rather post onto LinkedIn because I want to appeal to to uh, my connections. I want them to see what I'm doing with my business. I want them to know those things so that I could potentially have them as clients or we could potentially work together somehow. It's 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 like that. So that's just my opinion. I, I don't think that would be the same for everyone. But in my opinion, I think LinkedIn would be really good to for your career and for business. Cool. All right. So your LinkedIn is, uh, profile is what Kim Yang, Kim Yang, right? Man, that must be like, tons of it because your name is so common. Yeah, I know. It's like Kim is like it could be a Korean last name, and then yeah. Yang is just so general with Asians. I know. But, so you you have your face on there or something like that to I'm identify. Right? There. And and I'm from Atlanta too, so you can find me specifically from Atlanta on LinkedIn. Okay, and then we have your Facebook profile. We'll we'll, we'll put that in the show notes. And then uh, do you do you have like a business page or anything like that? I do on um, Facebook. I actually do. It, it's Kim Yang. <laughs> It's Kim Yang again on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. If you send it over, yeah. If, if you send it over, I'll, I'll just put it in there. Yeah, you know? yeah for sure. Instead of you guys just searching for it, if you send it over, I'll just put it in the, in the case, uh, the, the show notes. Yeah. So. Well, for me, I, I think um, I'm okay if people connect with me on LinkedIn. I mean, on, on Facebook. I think yeah. I'm okay with that as well. Um, but I, I also see here another comment that LinkedIn is great for B2B. Yes, which I agree completely. So business to business is a bit, uh, LinkedIn is a better platform, whereas Facebook is better for B2C, business to consumer. Oh, oh okay. That's something I learned today. Yeah, B2B, business to business. All right. Mm -hmm. So business consumer. So you know, on Facebook, you're, you're, you're looking for consumers mostly. Which is why a lot of real estate agents use Facebook because they want to find motivated sellers. Yeah, it's hard to find motivated sellers on LinkedIn because no one's just going to put motivated seller on their headline. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and like I said, friends and family. You know, if someone posts up a property or someone needs help selling their house, Facebook would be really good because friends of friends of friends are there on Facebook. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, there you go, guys. We got Kim explaining to us how we can get deals for you know really you know, pennies on the dollar. So uh, if you want to get a hold of her, um, you know, we'll put it in the, in the show notes. Uh, we do want to get to our last segment of the show, uh, which we ask every, every guest that comes on here that, you know, if, if I, if I was to give you a billion dollars, what would the first two things you do with it? Do I answer this or does everyone else? That's you. <laughs> oh, okay. um, if you give me a billion dollars, um, first two things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would uh, pay off all my debts. <laughs> okay. College was a bit much, but I pay my debt. Um, and then I would, I would invest. Um, specifically, I couldn't tell you right now, but all I know is I would invest, um, or I would at least learn how to invest. I think mm -hmm. the two things, or I would start strategizing on, you know, what I should invest in. Um, but I think those would probably be the two things that I would think about first. Our first, huh? And there you guys go. Yeah. That's the end of the show. Awesome. Thanks, Kim, for being a part of the show. Uh, that's all I got. I mean, yeah. thanks for doing this. This is, you know, give us an edge, like somebody said, you know, thanks for be, uh, being there to give us an edge on this. So yeah. um, 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 any last words? No, I mean, I know I came on here to speak about uh, real estate, um, and I'm very fortunate, you know, that I was able to connect with Chai and to, to get on this platform with you guys. Um, but I also do a lot of uh, digital marketing and social media marketing, too. So um, if that's something that you've been struggling with or if you know someone that, you know, could use the help, 
let me know too. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there as much as there is in real estate too. So yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, guys. All right. Thanks, Kim. And uh, guys, like I say all the time, keep hustling. All right. All right. Good, Good night, guys. All right. Good night.